Hello, welcome back to my channel. For all intents and purposes, in my heart and in my head, this is going to be my first ever reading vlog. I have done honestly two in the past that didn't work out so good, but I'm determined to make vlogs my thing on this fucking channel. I'm going to be good at vlogging. That's my goal for 2019 at least. Today, we're going to Goodwill. Yes. Yes. Excited because I was inspired by Heather from Aphrodite Reads. I'll put her link in the description. She has been getting all kinds of like really good shit at her local Goodwill in terms of books. While I don't need books, and while I did do a haul that I said would be my last haul of 2019, I would like to search for books. And I think it'd be fun to take you guys with me into Goodwill and we can kind of like peruse the different items together, the different books. Maybe we'll find other cool shit. I don't really know. This just seemed fun. It seemed like a good idea at the time. It could be a horrible idea. The way that we're going to do it is I'm going to put in a Goodwill location in my phone, go to the closest one, and then once I'm at that Goodwill, go to the next closest Goodwill, and we're just going to keep going until we find some good shit. I'm excited about it. I'm trying to make this work so we can drive and talk at the same time. I also want to see if I can find a floor length mirror, maybe at Goodwill, maybe at Home Goods. I don't really know. Let's get going. I probably look like an actual insane person because I was just chilling in my apartment's uh, parking lot. Oh, the lighting's gonna change. That's not cute. Okay, no. I haven't even typed in where we're going yet, so that's exciting. I just remember the last Goodwill I went to sucked and I'm hoping that I can find a better one that will actually have shit that I want because I feel like Goodwill's very hit or miss. The last one I went to had like cookbooks, Donald Trump's biography, nose will not stop fucking running. I'm sick of this weather. This is supposed to be Texas and it's like cold and rainy and ugly and I don't like this seasonal depression weather. Not appreciating it. I have been getting more into audiobooks lately and I just wanted to talk about that with you guys for a minute because it's something that has really helped my reading. I read 18 books this month, which like never happens. Like I cannot remember the last time that I read more than like 10 books in a month. I've been finishing like not an audiobook a day. I'm not that I'm not that ambitious and I also do actually have to do work sometimes at work, but I've really been enjoying just having something else to listen to. And I don't know, I guess I just always discounted audiobooks as A not real reading and B just not something that I like really wanted to do. I just wasn't impressed with most of the narrators of the audiobooks that I was reading and I also wasn't putting them at like two and a half times speed, which was like a total rookie move on my part. I don't know what I was doing before. I don't know why I'm acting like this is some sort of discovery that is just fucking mind blowing and that like no one else has ever done before, but it has really honestly saved my life this month. The girl in the car next to me is taking intense selfies with her music blasting and I'm not loving it. As you can probably tell, I didn't get very much footage from that Goodwill because I didn't realize it was gonna be taking me to the most busy Goodwill in my entire city. So it was kind of a stressful shopping experience. There wasn't that many good books. There weren't that many good books to choose from, but I got a couple that I'm actually excited about. This first one, I've heard some buzz about. I feel like it might've been a Goodreads choice winner a couple years ago. It's Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. And the reason I picked this one up is because of the note in the inside. We've been talking about how everything is made of stories. I hear this book is about the story of a marriage. Our marriage is the best story I know. Happy birthday, my darling. So either their marriage is shit or the book was shit, but either way, I liked the note in it. And also I kind of had an interest in reading this. I'm trying to get into more adult fiction this year. So that's why I got this one. And then the second book I got is one that's been on my to read list for a long time. I like books like this because I think they really get you to question your own morality and things of that nature. And it is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. I have friends who absolutely hate this book, friends that absolutely love this book. So I don't know which uh camp i'll stand <laughs> in but it's the 2016 book of the year from book of the month i guess people enjoyed it i don't know i'm i'm very this is gonna be high on my priority list of books to read now because it's adult fiction love shit like this stuff that's very controversial i'm hoping at the next goodwill we can actually find some young adult fiction the only things that were there a shitty copy of new moon and then a hardback of Blood Promise, one of the Vampire Academy books, which like I love Vampire Academy, but also I know that I would never be able to find the first ones in hardcover. So it's like, do I really want to do that to myself and be frustrated that my set doesn't match? No. I also already have the first two books in like the first edition paperback, if that makes sense. So also I don't honestly know how to get out of here. So we're going to our next Goodwill location. Genuinely, I don't know where it is. So that'll be fun. I love living in a city, but it is fucking stressful to park or drive anywhere. And of course they took me to like the worst Goodwill location. I want to go to one that's like kind of a hidden gem that like no one else goes to. Oh 
Okay, so I don't know where the fuck I am, if I'm being real. I just <laughs> tried to find a Goodwill that was outside of the city a little bit, and I struggled! As you guys saw, the Goodwill, the part that I think I filmed was just the paperback aisle. And then there was a whole nother section for hardbacks, but I found good shit. I only bought two books for you judge me. I know you're not supposed to resell ARCs, but how the fuck is it going to get out of Goodwill if I don't buy it? Do you know what I mean? I found an ARC of Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Honestly, it's just insane. It says 2012, so this book is old as shit and cover is amazing. I don't know. I was so taken aback when I found this because I don't think I've ever seen an ARC for any of Lee's books before. This is just amazing. I, I honestly love this cover like more than even the new shadow and bone cover so this is this is pretty much priceless i think i spent a dollar 99 on this and it was worth it i may or may not give this away i think i'm gonna keep it for a little while and kind of see what i think i'm so happy and then the second book that i got is the host by stephanie meyer i had this book when it came out but i lent it to a friend and they never returned it so i wanted to get another copy and maybe reread it sometime soon because when you guys say that you're sjm trash i have to reply i'm just sm trash you know what i mean that was really lame let's ignore that joke it's in really good shape honestly for like being jacketless so this goodwill trip was a success so far i've spent eight dollars at the first place and then i just spent five dollars here so i think i might try to go to one more goodwill and then we can go to chick-fil-a and just like talk i don't know let's get going to our next location Okay, so that was our final Goodwill stop. I got two more books. They had a couple of like good gems, but it was stuff that I already owned. The books that I got, the first one I got was The Vampire Lestat by Anne Rice or Lestat, however you want to say it, it doesn't really matter. My mom has this edition and for some reason it made me nostalgic and I was just like, you know what, I need it. I've read half of an interview with a vampire and I'm hopefully gonna get that one in hardcover as well so I can have two. It's just a series that I'm interested in continuing. Honestly, if I'm being real, this is probably something that I did need to buy, but like whatever. The guy charged me for paperbacks which was really nice of him because this one's a little bit damaged on the cover can't really tell but like right here looks like a dog chewed it so i only paid two dollars for both of these books which like amazing and then the second book i got was the book of dust by philip pullman who also wrote the golden compass i believe i've heard good things about this one although i haven't heard that many people reviewing it so i'm hopeful fully going to enjoy it and or read it kind of soon. I've been kind of in a fantasy mood. This one, I just like the atmosphere that I envision for like the Golden Compass and these books. It's, it's a nice somber sort of fantasy. And this is a first edition, which has a special full color illustration. Oh, wow. That concludes the Goodwill portion of this vlog. Now we're gonna go to Chick-fil-A. Alrighty, and what can I get for you? Can I get a number one, no pickles with a Coke? You enjoy, ma'am. Thank you. I don't know what the fuck we're gonna talk about, but I got my Chick-fil-A. I'm excited about the books I got. I was sort of on the fence about a couple of them, and like, honestly, should I have gotten six new books? No, Max Spice. But you know what? I was feeling inspired and I just, you know, I wanted to do it. So I'm glad, it, glad that I did. Okay, so I literally can't think of anything else to talk about. So let's get into my work in progress. I'm really fucking excited about it. And I say work in progress and not book because like, it's not going to be a book. I am not smart enough or capable enough to write a book. I'm not trying to shit on myself, but I think there's a lot of like very capable people out there who have been writing books since they were like 14. I have wanted to write a book for a really long time, but I've just like never been committed enough to actually sit down and do it. But I've had this story in my head for over a year now. Recently, I've kind of reimagined the, the story in my head and it's perfection. Like I know exactly what needs to happen. Not all the minute details, but I know who the key characters are. I know them like they're real people and I wanted to finally get this out but don't want to I like my goal is not to be published but I want people to see it and I'm not just writing it for myself I know that Michaela from I think it's Michaela's reading she changed her YouTube channel name but anyway I'll put her in the description below she is doing kind of like a choose your own adventure type serialized fiction podcast if that makes sense like it's a story you get to kind of choose where the story goes this is not like that like it's not you're not going to be able to like choose your own adventure kind of thing since i kind of know where things are going think of it as like a wattpad story but like you listen to it hopefully it has like slightly better writing than a wattpad story i'm writing it for like the emotions and for the rep because it's going to be a polyamorous story which if you follow me on twitter you probably know that i've been like talking about oh i'm gonna write like a poly book and i feel like i finally made 
a breakthrough. I started writing it like a month ago, the first chapter, because basically I want to write a chapter, edit it, send it to my friends, they let me know if they like it. Then I voice act it with Hayden because it's told from three point of views, it's told from a female perspective and then two male perspectives. I don't sound like a man, or do I? ideally would like to be posting one episode or one chapter a month on my YouTube channel. When I start writing tomorrow, like I'm gonna keep writing, I've written about half of chapter one and I wanna like take you guys along this journey with me as I write the rest of chapter one. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the characters, but for right now, my characters names are Jamie, Arabella, and Lou, which is short for Isaac Lucas. I'm not under any illusions that this is gonna be like fucking groundbreaking and like the most original idea and like the best written, best voice acted thing you've ever heard, but it's a story that like I want to tell and I'm hoping that at least a couple of people will be excited about it and like anticipating future episodes. So for the rest of the day, I think I'm just going to read. Maybe I'll write. I'm pretty, I've, I found that I really like writing late at night so i might take you guys i might let you guys see me write and i'll talk about writing as we do it because i'm basically gonna like walk you guys through it not just like watch me fucking type i think i'm gonna get home i think i'm going to clean a little bit i didn't end up going to home goods to look for a floor length mirror but i'm gonna probably do that tomorrow i really would like to finish the audiobook of clockwork prints today but i'm not sure if that's gonna happen i'll keep you posted i want to read all the shadow hunters books so i decided that i was gonna like download the audiobook for clockwork prince because i'd already read clockwork angel bitch it's ed westwick it's fucking phenomenal obsessed so i'm gonna try to finish that today feeling lazy like i don't actually want to sit down and read something like intense i just want someone to read to me okay so i was too lazy to get my camera out again but compliments to the fucking chef this sandwich is amazing chick-fil-a's kind of been letting me down or at least like the location i normally go to but they really just hit the ball out of the park with this one um it was handcrafted just for me sometimes life is really good sometimes you find an arc of shadow and bone and you get a spicy coat and you get a really good chicken sandwich it's just like So as you can see, I am home, I am in my bedroom, and now it's time to read. I have my phone ready for the audiobook, and I also have the physical book in case I want to like read along. I'm going to be reading Clockwork Prince, and I'm going to try to update you guys as often as I can. I'm on chapter three, and so far I really like it. As I said before, I like Ed Westwick as a narrator. Pepe decided that he wanted to come and hang out with me, so it's going to be me and him chilling. I'll probably put some like montage of us reading together. That's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the night. We're going to get cozy and uh, hopefully get kind of far in Clockwork Prince. <laughs> we are only a chapter past where we were when we started, but I am gonna probably continue to read this for a little while. Go hang out on the couch with Hayden. I'm gonna probably call it a night and I'll update you guys tomorrow on like what I think so far. See you guys tomorrow. It is Sunday. As you can see, I've been up for a second. I think it's like 11. Sundays are like my day to sleep in and I don't know, be a piece of shit. Today, basically my plan is to A, find a floor length mirror, B, clean my house, do my laundry, and like listen to the last half of Clockwork Prince because I'm about 60% done. Last time I talked to you guys, I think I was at like chapter five and now I'm far past that. And in a second, I'll kind of give you guys my feelings about it. But for the rest of the day, yeah, we're just gonna listen to the 
audiobook and then later at night during the Super Bowl I'm going to be writing and we can kind of talk about my work in progress and my characters and like just the whole process. It's gonna be a very chill day. I have this lovely cinnamon roll in front of me. Uh, my boyfriend just got us you know breakfast. So far I literally can't remember anything. I don't remember them going to Ravenscar Manor. I don't remember the increasing sexual tension between Gem and Tessa. Like I knew that it was a thing, like I knew what was gonna happen because obviously like greatest love triangle to ever exist. But I just, before I went to sleep, I <laughs> listened to the part where Tessa and Gem start like taking each other's clothes off and like rolling around on Tessa's bed. I don't remember that at all. I just remember Gem being like a puppy who was kind of like, I'm gonna eat while I do this. Let's just, let's be real. Gem basically just being a puppy dog. I don't remember there actually being like real sexual tension between the two of them. Although it does sort of change my opinion on Gem Tessa situation. I was very anti Gem and Tessa when I was just like remembering the series back because Will, Will's just great. You know, I'm a Herondale bitch. I really didn't think that I would sympathize with a gem. I mean, I like him as a character I always have, but I just didn't think I would want him with Tessa. I'm just very much in my polyamorous field and I really just feel like it should have been Polly. Also, I know the whole reason that like Will is keeping people at a distance is because of some curse he believes he has, but I don't know. I feel like it would have been more interesting had he kind of like brought shit on himself and he had actually been kind of a dick. Maybe that's just me sympathizing too much with asshole characters. I'm already like really, really sympathetic to Will now because he's like, you know, oh my God, <laughs> my sister's dead and I'm like, I know, it sucks. I wanted to like hate him a little bit more. Makes things more interesting. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna clean. May or may not time lapse that. I'm gonna try to finish this audiobook. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna go and buy myself a floor length mirror. It's gonna be a great time, so. Obviously I went to Home Goods, got myself a mirror. She's back here, you can't see her. Also went to Target, ran some errands. I've been doing laundry, been listening to this fucking audiobook. Now I'm eating Taco Bell in my car because it's a Sunday and I can't get Chick-fil-A. Thought I'd update you guys on Clockwork Prince, Cassandra Clare. Does everything have to be incest? I got to the part where Will takes Tessa, who's dressed up as Jessamine, to this ball, and Jessamine is supposed to be like in cahoots with Tessa's brother Nathaniel or Nate or whatever the fuck his name is. And she has to dance with her brother, and it's just like, it's like, how much is too much? Also, I got a little bit past that when Tessa and Will make out, and I was like, I don't really have many thoughts other than that, like honestly. I'm mostly just here for the emotions and the ships and like it's going okay, I guess. I will say I seem to remember this book having a lot of like emotional weight and also having a lot of plot significance, but to be honest with you, I'm really not feeling the plot. There's not much happening. They're supposed to be investigating Mortmain and kind of like why he's doing these bad things. But we're not getting a lot of answers and I also just don't really give a shit. Like I kind of only care about Wessa. I'm gonna finish my Taco Bell in this parking lot. I'm also going to take you guys back home with me and then we're going to do some writing and that'll be the end of this vlog. If you're still here, God bless you. Okay, so I just woke up from a nap, but I thought I would talk to you guys about my work in progress because I'm writing right now. I told you guys the names of my main characters, Arabella, Lou, and Jamie, um, but I thought I would just kind of like tell you guys more about my story in general and just kind of my characters as I'm writing them. So the story is a new adult romance and it's set at a university called Hemphill College. It's a private liberal arts college and it happens to have a really good football team. So my main characters are <laughs> Jamie. This is kind of what I imagined him to look like. I'm gonna insert a picture right here. He was the first character I thought of when I was imagining this book. He has platinum blonde hair, blue eyes. He's like 6'4", plays football. He's kind of a mystery. There's a lot of mystery surrounding his character. He is a really, really good football player. However, no one really knows anything about him privately or like 
personally. So our next character's name is Arabella. Everybody calls her Belle, B-E-L. This is kind of what I imagine her to look like. And she is at Hemp Hill kind of unwillingly. It's her sophomore year and she is applying to the journalism program at Hemp Hill, which is notoriously hard to get into, but she had to transfer into Hemp Hill in the first place and she had no intention of ever coming back to Hemp Hill. She has a history with the university, but she's sort of stuck and has to deal with the consequences of being back at Hemp Hill. And then our last character's name is Lou. This is kind of what I imagine him to look like. And he has a history with Jamie. He is fucking gorgeous. First of all, he has red hair. He wears eyeliner. He wears nail polish. He's fucking beautiful. But it's sort of like an enemies to lover situation with Jamie and, and Lucas because some bad shit went down in the day, which you'll have to find out as I write. But Right now I'm doing the character introductions and we kind of get to see how they come to come into play. The introductory chapter is tough because I have to set the tone for both the story as a whole, but also the points of view because I don't, while I'm writing in third person technically, I guess, I want them all to kind of have their own distinct voice, which is proven difficult, especially I'm finding that like, writing for me is kind of difficult when it's fiction because you have to convey not only the facts and the setting but also the emotions of the characters i'm having a really hard time with that so kind of my goal for today is to just like flesh out exactly what's going to happen happen in chapter one and then as i edit i'll start infusing more of kind of like the nuances of the character relationships and their emotions and shit so that was a long way of saying that the first chapter is going to be fun and this whole story is going to be really fun and i'm excited to like read it and talk about it. I said I was gonna like write, but I also want to get this vlog posted. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish editing this vlog. I've been doing that and writing kind of off and on for the latter half of the day. It's like eight o'clock now. So thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed it a little bit. If you did, let me know if you want more vlogs from me. I'm gonna call it a night. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend and until next time.